story of Tom Thumb. There was once a couple who so wished that they had children. And one day the wife said, you know, I would be happy with the child, even if it never got any bigger than my thumb. And it just goes to show you should always be careful what you wish for. For some time later, she gave birth to a healthy baby, but he never ever got any bigger than my thumb. So they named him Tom, and Tom Thumb was a clever, nimble little chap. And one day he said to his father, as his father was taking the wagon into the forest to load wood, said, I think I can help. If you lift me up and put me in the horse's ear, I can tell the horse which way to go. So they tried that, and the horse listened as Tom told him to go to the left or go to the right. And as the horse was drawing the wagon along the road to well, perhaps we could call them scoundrels, but two not very nice men. Saw the horse walking along with no one at the reins. I heard a voice saying, Oh, giddy up! Giddy up! from near the horse. And they thought this was very strange. And it was then that the farmer, who was actually very proud of his son, lifted Tom out of the horse's ears and showed them. This is my son. He's a clever chap. The two men looked at little Tom and said, Hmm, we could make a lot of money showing him in the city. He would be great in a circus. So they offered to buy Tom for a large amount of gold. And the father said, He's my son. He's very precious to me. That Tom climbed up his father's clothes and whispered in his ear and said, I can easily escape and we need some gold. So, with some misgivings, but listening to his clever son, the father took the gold and Tom soon found himself sitting on the brim of one of the men's hats. And off they walked, and they were heading off into the city further than Tom had ever been in his life. And Tom said to the man, put me down, put me down. I need to get down now. And at first the man wasn't sure, but after a little while, he picked Tom off the brim of his hat and put him down on the forest floor. And Tom ran off as quick as a wink. I found a mouse hole, and he scurried down in the mouse hole, for it was dark where they stay. And the men tried to find him, and they poked a long stick down into the mouse hole, but Tom could simply run further back. And they never did find Tom. So they had to carry on their journey toward the city, lighter of pocket and heavier of heart. So Tom climbed up out of the mouse hole and found a snail's shell in which to shelter and spend the night. But as he fell asleep, he heard two other men's voices saying, So how are we going to steal the gold from the rich pastor, the rich vicar? And Tom said, I can help you with that. And the two men looked at each other and thought it was very strange that they could hear a voice and yet see no one. But when Tom had explained that he was there, the sight of a thumb at their feet, he said, I can help you get into the rich pastor's house. So they lifted Tom up to the bars of the window and of course he climbed through the bars. And then he said, in a surprisingly loud voice for such a little chap. 
Do you want me to pass everything up to you? And the two thieves standing outside the bar said, Not so loud, you'll wake everyone up. And Tom pretended not to hear. And he said, Do you want me to pass everything through to you? And the maid in the next room could hear them. And she woke up and went in to try find where this voice was coming from. But she could see no one. Or well, she couldn't see Tom come. And the two thieves standing outside, seeing the maid's lant lantern, decided it was best to run away. So the maid went back to sleep. Tom climbed out of the room and went in the barn where there was nice soft hay for him to make a cosy bed for himself and there he slept the rest of the night. But in the morning, when the cow woke up, she was hungry and she began to eat the hay that Tom was hidden himself in. So Tom soon found himself sliding down into the cow's belly and more and more hay kept coming in her belly and Tom cried out, no more fodder, no more fodder. And the maid, when she went to milk the cow, could hear a voice coming from inside saying, no more fodder, no more fodder. And so the maid went and told the pastor, I, I think the cow's possessed. And when the pastor went into the barn and could hear Tom's voice as he bellowed from inside her belly, no more fodder, he agreed with the maid that the cow was possessed. So she was slaughtered that day. And her stomach was taken out, still with poor Tom inside it, and thrown on the heap. But it just so happened that a hungry wolf was skirting round the farmyard that day. And the wolf ate the cow's stomach with Tom still inside. So Tom found himself now inside the belly of a wolf. And he said to the wolf, if you're still hungry, I know where there's a great place where you can eat an incredible meal. And Tom described his father's house and described the drain that led into the kitchen. And so the wolf, listening to all of this, found the house, found the drain and climbed through the drain up into the kitchen and there he ate such a big meal that when he tried to get back down the drain he found he was stuck. So when Tom's parents came into the kitchen they heard his voice coming up from the drain saying I'm in here, I'm in the wolf's belly, get me out. So the farmer took an axe and his wife took a scythe, and between them they managed to kill the wolf and they managed to cut open the wolf's belly and they managed to take out little Tom and they washed him down and gave him some new clothes and gave him something nice to eat and Tom related all his adventures to them about going down the mouse hole and the thieves and the maid and the pastor and he said I'm never going travelling again I'm going to stay here with you and I'll just ride the horse inside his ear and Tom never did go travelling again he'd had enough of adventure perhaps you have too I don't think so. I think you're an adventurous person. I think you'd like to go travelling. But maybe not quite like Tom did. Mm -hmm. So I hope to see you sometime.
when you go traveling and in the meantime um there are lots of stories there are lots of stories out on youtube there's the world storytelling cafe beautifully run by john rowe where there are some awesome tellers telling some incredible stories so do check out the world storytelling cafe um, do subscribe to my channel there's um, lots more Brothers Grimm stories coming up and um, stay well see you soon